Hi everyone, it's Lori Langford, and in today's webinar, I'm going to talk to you about the shooting technique of intentional camera movement, or otherwise known as ICM photography. So intentional camera movement has become a um, popular form of abstract impressionistic photography. This is where you're creating images using camera motion. So you're intentionally moving the camera as you shoot. It's a way to see beyond the literal and to just create some really incredible images that showcase textures, lines, lights, and color. So let's jump in and learn more about this really fun process. So ICM is all about capturing the emotions or mood of a place or thing. It's beyond capturing the literal. So you're not just capturing a forest of trees. You're thinking about how to express the emotions or the mood of that forest of trees. So landscape, street, even macro photography are about capturing details with accuracy. So normally when we shoot, we're trying to showcase textures, lines, colors. We're trying to bring out all the details. With ICM photography, you're allowed to put a few of those things away and you can think more about the emotion, the feeling, what it's like to stand at the ocean during a sunset or sunrise. ICM is a diversion from technical accuracy. So you don't have to be as technically perfect. You don't have to take maybe multiple exposures or use HDR. Um, it's about seeing the emotion and expressing the way you feel in the moment at the place and what vision you want to create. So it's a little bit freeing and a whole lot of fun. So let's talk about some ICM basics. And throughout today's webinar, you'll see some of my ICM images, and I'll talk about different techniques as we go. So this image is a panning image at the ocean, and this was at a sunrise or sunset. I don't remember which. And it's just, you know, the beautiful color, the waves, the lines. And this was using a panning technique where you're moving the camera really fast or slow in one direction or the other. And in this instance, I was moving it um, horizontally. So the basics of ICM, again, it's an intentional camera process. It's moving the camera while you expose or press the shutter. You're going to introduce blur and movement using a slower shutter speed. The, the technique still requires composition. So you still have to think about what you're shooting, how you want to express it, but it's free of other rules of photography. So it's a very loose and more interpretive um, interpretive process. I like to think about it like dancing. So there are specific styles of dance um, like jazz, ballet, waltzes, and those have specific, um, I guess you would say rules, steps that you take, process, but there's also free movement dance and just dancing in your house and just enjoying the art of dance. And that's a lot like ICM photography. So you don't have to follow maybe all those other kind of rules and ideas. You get to be a lot looser in your shooting. So this image is of a snowy winter scene and just trying to capture the branches of these evergreens, the movement of the snow and the light. So this was using a vertical pan, um, kind of almost um, angled towards the um, upper right corner as I was shooting. So you can see the movement I was able to capture down in the ground area. So we're going to talk about how to capture um, ICM. So the great news is it's really any camera, anytime, anywhere. And I tell students that because a lot of people get hung up again on having to have specific equipment or shooting at particular times of day. And with ICM, you can use any camera you have on you and really any time of day and any location. A tripod is absolutely not needed. Most ICM photographers do not use a tripod. The idea is to actually move your body along with um, your camera when you're shooting. 
So focus and depth of field are not important with this type of photography. So you may have your initial focus on a set of trees, but once you start moving with ICM, that focus is not as important. And depth of field is just not going to be as important, again, because you're blurring, you're blurring the image. So when you shoot with ICM, it's preferable to either shoot in manual mode or shutter speed priority. So if you normally shoot an aperture priority, you may want to change that to manual mode. Your f-stop, your aperture, needs to be f-16 or greater. Now, sometimes you may be able to get away with f-11, but typically you're going to want to shoot at those higher f-stop numbers. As you make the movement, you are going to be letting in a lot of light. You can start with at least 1 30th of a second shutter speed, and you can go all the way up to two seconds. I find a one second to be a really sweet spot for intentional camera movement, um, but depending on your light um, will depend on that shutter speed. And you can play with it to see how your exposure comes out. ISO you want to keep low, but if for some reason you're shooting in a really dark area, you can of course raise your ISO. Now you can use ND filters, a um, ND 4, 2, um, through an 8 can help you if you're in bright daylight. So if you're shooting in the middle of the day and you want to use ICM, even at F16 or F22, you may have an overexposed image. And so that's when I recommend applying an ND filter, maybe an ND2, an ND4. It's going to help with um, those light conditions. Now, composition is still critical, and we'll talk about that as we go through some more images. So with your camera movement, I can't stress enough experimenting. When you're just getting started with ICM, you want to start by making small movements of the camera. And I encourage you to start making movements that are vertical, so um, moving up and down with the camera, or horizontal where you're panning. Um, these small movements are going to give you less blur and more of the scene in focus. As you get more used to it, you can start thinking about making larger movements and even faster movements. Those are going to give you much smoother lines and a whole lot less detail. Experiment with vertical, horizontal, even circular movements. You can also use a zoom lens as I did in this bottom image and you turn the zoom as you're shooting. But as you're getting started, you're going to want to just experiment with lots of movement. So here's a variety of examples. So this upper left image was shot of a field of flowers using the zoom technique. So this is where, again, as you press the shutter, you are moving your zoom lens in or out. And you can do both directions um, to get that fun spiral movement. The image over here on the right is similar using that spiral to just create a really abstract, fun image. These are definitely more abstract. Now, to create an image that is more impressionistic, this middle image was taking, taken using what's called a judder technique, where you move the camera just a little bit towards your face. So you have to make sure you don't pop your eye, but you can also hold your camera out and then just move it back in a jerk motion towards your face. It creates this almost multiple exposure look. It's a very impressionistic um, image. Same thing was done in this bottom left corner. This is um, just jerking the camera a little bit forward. Now this middle image on the bottom is a vertical pan. So just moving the camera up as I shot. And again, start with small movements and then you can make larger as you go. So we've covered some of these techniques already, but when you think about panning, that's where you're moving the camera from left to right. This works really great with water scenes. So as you think about the ocean, you can move your camera in a slow or a fast movement, moving it left or right, and you can play with different um, shutter speeds to get a different look each time. So you can also do the vertical, moving the camera up or down. We talked about you can also move circular, so you can take your camera and kind of jerk it to the right in a circular pattern. You can do wavy movements. 
Circular and wavy work really nice if you have a longer exposure. So if you're using an ND filter and you can shoot for, let's say, a full second or two seconds, you can really get some interesting looks using circular or wavy. We talked about zoom, and then you can also do tilt with a spot focus. So if you have one of those longer exposures, you can do a vertical tilt, then move the camera to focus on a particular spot, and you're going to get all that combined, almost like a double exposed image. So these images, again, we're doing some horizontal um, kind of upward movement of panning. And this top image has fast movement and the bottom image is a little bit slower, so it brings out more detail. As we look at some more images, these are of plants and I love to capture plants with ICM. I think it really brings out the colors, the textures, the lines and creates a, just a gorgeous abstract look. So these are really easy to do if you find just a bunch of green or even brown um, or colored grasses out in nature. You just get pretty close to the grasses so that you are isolating the subject and then try different movements. So this has a um, pan that went downward. So I'm shooting and moving the camera in the direction of the grasses. So this one was going across. You can see this is a vertical downward mo movement. So kind of capturing um, that downward. This is going to be where I angled the camera. And then some of these were vertical um, panning as well. Now, you always also want to think about your light and where that light is coming from and the lines of your subject um, to really create these um, abstract looking images. So you may be wondering what to capture with ICM, and I would say absolutely anything. I now incorporate ICM in almost all of my photo walks and photo shoots or any place that I'm visiting or traveling. So any landscape scene works beautifully, garden scenes, and even objects work great with ICM. There's no subject that isn't interesting to try to capture with this technique. So any lens will work. It depends on how much of the scene you want to capture. So you can do um, use a macro lens and use ICM. I've done that with flowers. You can use your telephoto. You can use really any, any lens. Um, what that's going to determine is um, how much of the scene is in your picture based on your focal length of your lens. So this was an image using that judder technique. So it looks very impressionistic. It looks like a multiple exposure, but it was shot doing um, a movement forward towards my eye with the lens as I shot this forest scene. Here are some of the dahlia images that I've done using my macro lens. So getting in very close and just making sweeping movements. Now the image on the left has smaller movements, so it's just a really softening approach. The image on the right is much stronger. The movement was faster to create this more abstract soft look. And here's another one of some dahlias. Again, just some movement going up into the petals to just create something really soft and abstract. Now this is a water scene and water scenes are a great place to start with ICM. So you can pan in one direction horizontally or the other. This is a very soft pan. So this would have been really small movement. You can do much faster movement to um, to really blur out the area. Now this area did not have a lot of waves. I think this was on a harbor. So the water was pretty flat to begin with, but you'll see some other images with um, ocean water with waves. So some tips. First and foremost, you have to be patient. And when you're getting started, you're going to have to take a lot of images. So anyone who shoots ICM will tell you, have your SD card ready. And I would say to start with at each location that you're shooting, let's say you've got um, you're out of the ocean and you want to do some ICM, you need to probably take 20 to 40 images because every shot's going to be different and you're going to adjust as you go. So you're going to adjust based on your shutter speed, the light and the look that you're getting. 
And out of those 40 plus images, you may get one or two that you really, really like. As you get more and more experience with ICM, you won't have to take as many. Typically now I'll take about 12 and I'll see an image that I really like and then I know that I've got it and I'm going to move on. It's also fun though to shoot ICM for a long time because you get such variety of images. So the final look of the image depends on the movement you make, the speed, the smoothness of your movement, of course your camera settings and the light. So you can play with those factors as you're shooting. Now be sure to continue your movement throughout the exposure. So if you have a longer exposure, be sure you continue to move unless you want to move and then um, put your camera on a particular spot. If you're getting started, some people find it easier to start the movement and then press the shutter and continue moving. So it, it can be tricky to move and press the shutter. So when you're getting started, start your movement, press the shutter, um, and that way you're already moving and you continue that movement. Another tip is do not delete images until you process at home. I can't stress that enough. I know when you look on the back of your viewfinder, you're going to think, oh, that looks awful. Oh, that looks awful. Don't delete the images. Go ahead and upload them and look at them. You may need to do some editing. Maybe you even use the auto edit options and just see how they look. Um, you may be surprised. And then just don't give up. Keep trying, keep practicing. I would encourage if you're interested in this type of photography that every time you're out shooting, try a little bit of ICM. Over time, you'll get more and more comfortable with the process. So here's some examples with some settings. So this was again the ocean. You can see I was able to get some of the waves and the details. This was at sunrise. I did have on a polarizer filter and I used a zoom lens. So it was at 54 millimeters. I was only at F13 because this was right before the sun came up and my ISO was a little bit high. I was already shooting the ocean that morning and decided to take off, take my camera off the tripod and do some camera movement. You can see my shutter speed was only at 1 12th, but I moved the camera really fast to get this movement. So again, there's no technical rules with this process. Um, I would try to keep your f-stop at least above f13 so that you're able to get enough detail in your image. So this is another image before sunset. This was a slower panning at f18, ISO 125, so there was more light in the scene, 50 millimeters, and only at a tenth of a second I was still able to get all of this um, movement and it was a um, slower panning movement. So this was later in the day. It was daylight but cloudy. Um, a UV filter was on and I just did the zoom technique where I zoomed out while exposing. So it started at 16 millimeters, F22, a half a second. And I just zoomed as I went um, in and out. So that's a really fun technique to try. So this image was daylight, cloudy, no filter, and I just did a slight panning movement in a diagonal. So I went up with the movement to capture these, um, I think, um, salvia that were just kind of blowing in the wind. So this was with my 60 millimeter, or was at 60 millimeters, F22, again, a half a second, and ISO 125. And this is kind of a sweet spot technical setting. Again, this was at daylight, this area was more shaded in the garden. And again, I just did these slight movements up to um, get this beautiful movement. Now this image is um, edited with an oil paint on top of it. So that's giving it much more impressionistic look. And this image um, has been one of my favorites and one that um, I have um, been really really proud of and gotten some recognition for. So this image was um, daylight, it was cloudy, it was late in the afternoon, no filter used. And I went out to shoot these wildflowers and decided to do it with some camera movement. So it's a very small tilt upward, made vertically, very, very slight. You can see a little streaking of the yellow flowers, but it was just a tiny movement 
one tenth of a second only at f8. Again, I was already out shooting and um, I just, this is an older image. I wish I had done it maybe um, at f13 to f16, but this is what I shot it at. And um, I just love how it softened this whole field. And here's some more ocean scenes. So you can see just the variety. This is all from um, one photo shoot. And looking at, um, this was at the end images were at a sunrise and the middle was at a sunset. So just tilting the camera in different directions. You can see in this upper left image, a lot more detail in the water. So this would have been um, a little bit slower and just getting more of that detail. And the one on the right would have been a lot faster movement so that there's less detail. And you can see just different directions and playing with how much detail you want and how much movement that's going to require. And this is an image of a field of wildflowers where I just um, moved the camera towards my face in order to get that kind of double, double exposure look. All right, so I hope that you've gotten some ideas about intentional camera movement photography and that you will give it a try. My next video this month is going to be focused on how to edit these images. There are some great tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you. If you have questions about ICM, please place it in the comments. I'd be glad to um, answer those and um, help you get started on this journey of creative photography. Thanks, everyone.